Are you keeping up with the maintenance on your bike? I know, things get in the way, miles go by, time just gets away from you sometimes. But today, we're gonna to talk about three reasons why you should be maintaining your bike religiously. Hey, this is Chad, Be Gone For Good. I make content all about adventure motorcycling from trips and tips and tutorials and gear reviews, anything under the sun when it comes to ADV motorcycling, you're gonna find it on this channel. If that's the sort of thing you're interested in, definitely subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications anytime we upload a new video, and hit that thumbs up if you like the sort of things that you're seeing here. The three things we're gonna be talking about today are just some of the reasons why it's really important to be maintaining your bike. It is in, by no means a complete list and, and maybe not even the most important reasons. These are just the three reasons that stick out in my head for why I maintain the bike and why I try to keep up with that schedule as best as is humanly possible. Number one, and probably the easiest answer is because it's a big, expensive purchase that you made here and you wanna make sure it lasts. You wanna make sure this bike is is doing well into the future, that it's it runs well, it, it operates at that like new capability as long as possible. Maintenance is the best way to ensure that this happens, whether that's your, your bike chain or your tires or your cables or just making sure all your bolts are nice and tight. All of that helps to ensure that that bike stays as good as possible for as long as possible. Couple this with, you also wanna be safe on that bike, obviously, a uh, broken chain is a problem in the garage, but at 70 miles an hour, it's a problem for your life. So you wanna make sure that you're maintaining all of these different aspects here because unlike a car where if you have a breakdown, you just stay on your four wheels and you get off to the side of the road. If you have a breakdown on the bike, especially at speed, it could be catastrophic and even fatal. So you wanna make sure that everything that you could be doing to put that bike in its tip top condition at all times is something that you're taking advantage of. The second reason is because whether we want to believe it or not, every time we buy a bike, it probably isn't going to be our last bike. I know that the two bikes that I've bought, I said, I'm never going to have another one. This is, this is the one I'm going to ride until it, it crumbles into dust. And inevitably, they end up getting sold. And, and not too long afterwards, strangely. But if you want to maintain the resale value on these bikes, it's really very important to keep up with that maintenance schedule and to do a lot of the work as, as often as you can or as thoroughly as you possibly can. Because with ADV bikes, unlike the Harleys and the, the sport bikes out there, we kind of expect them to be scuffed and scratched and dented and dinged because of where we ride them. Now, imagine this. You've got two separate garages, two different Africa Twins in there that are both beat up the exact same way, okay? In garage A, the guy's selling the vehicle, but he doesn't have any paperwork or anything. He's just got a beat up AT with bent crash bars and, and scratches in the paint and plastic that's been cracked. But in garage B, you've got that exact same bike, but the owner has maintenance schedules for every bolt that he turned and every time he cleaned the chain and every time he checked his tires and aired up his tires and, and did oil changes and air filter changes and all of that, that paperwork, he's got available and ready to go. As a prospective buyer, you look at Garage B and you're kind of like, this guy really takes care of that bike. Even though it's beat up the way an ADV bike should be, he really takes care of this. And, and the internal components are really what we're worried about at that time. So knowing that you've got somebody who's keeping up with that maintenance and really paying attention and, and doing a good job of cataloging all of it makes that bike worth a lot more to that next owner. The last reason I've come across, and really this was just by dumb luck, is that the more often you are pulling your bike apart and putting it back together and fixing things that you can and repairing and maintaining all of the different items on the bike, the more comfortable you are with that bike in general, but also the more comfortable you are in pressure circumstances. If you are on the side of the road and you've never changed your tire before or taken the tube out, that's now a much more different experience than if it's something that's kind of old hat for you. Now you just have to do it on the side of the road with whatever tools you have available. Maybe a little bit of improvisation there, but at least you know the basic process. And if you've done other things on your bike, if you've gone through the air filters, if you pulled the, the fairings off, if you've had to weight down the rear so you can get the front tire off, and, and all of those different things that you learn in the confines of your own garage or working on your bike, 
is a comfort level that you can take out into the field with you when, truthfully, the real, the real stuff hits the fan. That's why it's so vitally important to be doing the maintenance. And if you can, do the maintenance yourself. Now, obviously, I'm not telling you to rip this apart and start boring out cylinders and stuff. Like, that may be more of a professional job. If you are comfortable doing that, absolutely go ahead. I'm not that guy. But there is a line there where you should be comfortable with certain aspects of this job and certain aspects of riding a bike so that when you're out in the field and you are away from any other help, you are at least comfortable turning a wrench on your own bike. Now for a slight bonus tip here, I know that maintenance isn't necessarily for everybody out there. I know that getting your hands dirty or even the time that's involved might not work for everybody. You know, if you've got an opportunity to maybe get a couple hours a ride per week and that's it, you probably don't want to spend one or both of those hours working on the bike to be prepared for that ride. So if time is that big of a factor for you, take it to somebody, but don't forego maintenance because you don't have the time. Always either take it to somebody or ideally do it yourself, but ultimately make sure that that bike is maintained at the top, top position that you possibly can go to. Whatever it needs, get it done, get it done before you get to that, that mile mark. If it's a 16,000 mile checkup and you've got 15.8 on there, don't push it to 16.5 or 17 or 18, God forbid. Make sure you get that maintenance done and do it well. This is Chad with Be Gone For Good. Thank you very much for tuning in. I am going to leave a link to a video here. I just wanna let everybody know, every time you're watching these videos, every time you're commenting or sharing or liking, all of it has been helping out Be Gone For Good's mission. I am very much encouraged by everything that we've been able to do so far. And I really look forward to jumping into 2021 with a whole new renewed sense of what this channel is capable of doing. So thank you to everybody who's tuning in, who's being a part of the family, who's being a part of the Be Gone For Good crew and making this all possible. It's a, it's a big testament to what you guys are worth out there. So thank you again. That's it for me on this video. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below. I try to get through everything. It's been a little bit rough recently because there's been a lot of comments, but I'll try and get back to you. If you wanna reach out to me directly, chad at Be Gone For Good is my email address. Definitely check me out there. Otherwise, I'll see you next week in the next video.